Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we're going to look at some of the games that are coming out in this next week on the Nintendo Switch. We're going to look at 10 games in total up to and including next Friday which is the 17th of July. Last week saw some interesting niche games released, including some that had been highly anticipated for a while. So how will this week fare? Well, let's find out. First up then releasing on the 12th we have Yoga Master. Now this game actually came out back in March on the Switch but is re-releasing with some DLC included as well. This new package includes the original Yoga Master as well as a Dreams Fantasy Pack with the whole thing bundled together costing you £23.39 or your regional equivalent. The game itself is a fitness and well-being type experience where you would use the Joy-Con in order to carry out the stretches that you see on the screen in the same vein of something like Wii Fit back in the day or more recently Ring Fit Adventure or Fitness Boxing. By the looks of it the new DLC is just a new training environment and some backgrounds which is disappointing it would have been nice to see them add some extra routines but if you are looking for a fitness program of any description especially after the lockdown this one may be worth considering. Next up we have a game called Res PLZ or Please I'm assuming, that's how we spell please these days isn't it? Which is a puzzle platformer using a pixel art style. Now I'll be honest when I first saw the word Res I got excited for a minute and thought it was something to do with the classic game from back in the early 2000s but it doesn't appear to be anything to do with that I'm afraid. After that initial disappointment and to give the game its due, it sounds as if it has quite an interesting premise in when you play in co-op play, instead of having to cooperate to get through a level you actually have to try and kill each other in order to solve puzzles and move on, then using a resurrection scroll to bring the other person back. The characters themselves are wizards and are trying to defend their school which has been overrun by evil forces and you will learn a variety of new magical spells as you play. It seems to have quite a dark and macabre sense of humour and the pixel art is certainly pleasant plus it comes with a 20% pre-order discount up until the 22nd of July. Next for the week we have Neon Abyss coming out on the 14th and selling for £15.99. This is an action platformer run and gun with roguelike elements and is published by Team 17. It sees you making your way through an evolving dungeon with new rooms, items and bosses appearing every time you play plus it says there are a variety of different endings to try and unlock. I mentioned the items just now and as you unlock them they will stack with each other with each new combination creating a new item synergy changing the way that the weapons would then work. It mentions on the blurb that if you buy the game during launch week you will receive the lovable rogues pack for free which gives you two new rogues to play as. And it's just a shame and it seems to happen with a few of these sort of games that it's only one player. In my opinion games such as these, the run through the dungeon roguelikes, really do benefit from being multiplayer games. They're fantastic in co-op so that is unfortunate. Nonetheless it certainly looks interesting plus there is a demo on the store if you want to try it out before you buy. And next on the 15th we have a game called Boss Guard which came out on Steam last month. This game is playable with up to 6 players both locally and online and appears to be a PvP game where one of you will play as the boss and the rest will try to team up and take them down. It features a viking setting and each of the characters that you can choose from have their own special abilities. It uses a nice low poly art style and sells for £16.99, again all your regional equivalent but comes with a 23% discount for the first week of its release up to the 22nd of July. The next game also out on the 15th is called Hashtag Fun Time which is a really generic name and it's selling for £13.49. This is a twin stick shooter with a neon wireframe aesthetic which does look really appealing to be fair and reminds me at first glance of something like Geometry Wars. Now it says that the twist in the gameplay is that not only is it a traditional twin stick shooter but it also has a colouring mechanic where you earn bonus points by colouring in the playing field with the colour of your ship. You will be able to earn ship upgrades and there are over 50 levels as well as leaderboards, it doesn't say whether they are online or not though. 
Now I do love games like this, I have a real soft spot for them, but my take on them usually is that they are a quick 10 minutes here and there, so generally I won't spend too much money on them. For £13.49 this one would have to be pretty deep. That being said it certainly looks fun, I'm loving the art style, and this one I'll probably keep half an eye on next week. Coming on the 16th we have a game called Never Song. This tells the story of a boy named Pete who wakes from a coma to find that his sister is missing. The blurb says, investigate the screams coming from the heart of Black Wood, the increasingly violent behaviour of the grown-ups and the strange truth about Pete's past in this hauntingly dreamlike fable. And the word haunting is a very apt way to describe the aesthetic. It uses a very muted colour scheme, lots of sepia tones and the characters look like something straight out of a Tim Burton animated movie. It mentions having to fight your way through hordes of spiders, monsters and bloodthirsty grown-ups using your barber's blade and I'm assuming in some respects it will play a bit like Limbo. It definitely looks interesting and hopefully the gameplay will be just as good as the macabre setting that it's definitely creating. Next is a game called Never Break Up, which is selling for £8.99 and is a co-op 3D platformer where your two characters are bound together by an elastic band and you must work together in order to get to the end of the level, obviously having to overcome a variety of puzzles, obstacles and enemies as you go. It mentions that the levels have been meticulously crafted with two players in mind and if you're playing in solo then you will need to control both players at the same time. Be interesting to see how that works. It actually says that the game can be played with up to four players, although I'm assuming that's for some of the mini games that come bundled with it too, rather than the actual game itself. The blurb goes on to say that there is a realistic physics engine, obviously in relation to that elastic band which binds you together. I watched the trailer and it looks pretty decent, and is selling for a cheap price to be fair, I think they've got their price spot on if they want to be competitive on what's a very crowded eShop these days. And if you're interested, this one comes out on the 16th. Then we have a game called Caretaker, which is a first person horror walking simulator by the looks of it, selling for £7.19. This sees you playing as an investigative journalist who is looking for a story and has heard of an urban legend about a caretaker killer. You travel to the industrial facility where this was meant to have taken place and look to explore and uncover the myth. Having just watched the trailer, it looks very similar to pretty much every one of these that are on the Switch now. And there are a lot of these on the Switch now, actually. It surprises me just how many. You have your typical dilapidated setting, the candles and dimly lit lights, the random teddy bears just strewn around the place for no reason at all, and the messages written in blood on the walls. I do like these sort of games. I am a huge horror fan, as I've said many times, but I do like a bit of imagination to go into them and to not have to retread the same old ground every time. Perhaps I'm wrong and it throws a few curveballs in there. I suppose we'll have to wait and see. But as far as I'm concerned, the trailer didn't show me a whole lot to make this stand out from the crowd. And then the big one for the week, releasing on the 17th, we have Paper Mario, The Origami King. This is, what, the sixth game in the Paper Mario series now, I think? Across a variety of different consoles going all the way back to the Nintendo 64. This one sees Mario joined with a new companion named Olivia as you go on an adventure across Papercraft World, facing off against the Origami King and his army of paper invaders. I always love it when any game uses a craft type aesthetic. Obviously the Paper Mario series itself has been doing it for a while, but this one even more so because not only do you have the flat paper-like characters, but of course you have these new origami type characters too. Really looks quite lovely. From what I've heard on the grapevine so far, it sounds as if this one will be more open world than the other entries in the series, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And I'm just intrigued in general to see which way this particular entry in the series will go. The games have kind of moved in a new direction over the years, away from what they started as on the N64 and the GameCube, so it'll be interesting to see where this one takes the series next. It's going to cost you £49.99 or your regional equivalent, and considering the short turnaround between this being announced and being released, let's hope Nintendo have a few more surprises up their sleeves for the months to come. And the final game we're going to look at for this week then is Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus. 
This will see you taking control of the most technologically advanced army in the Imperium, the Adeptus Mechanicus, in this turn-based tactical game. There are 50 missions to take on, and it also includes the Heretic DLC missions. This game was due to come out on a Switch a few months back, I remember it being on the Coming Soon page, but then it promptly disappeared, but it has been out on Steam since 2018. It's more expensive than it is on Steam at the minute, although it does mention here that you'll get that Heretic DLC, I don't know how much that is worth, and whether that makes up for the price hike, but it's something to keep in mind. Perhaps fans of this game can let us know down below exactly what the difference is. It seems to have positive reviews elsewhere, which is good, and I know this is a game some people have been looking forward to for a while, and it's finally here on the Switch on the 17th. So there you have it, 10 games for next week, as I said, up to and including the 17th of July. Do any of these games interest you? Paper Mario, I'm sure, will be the big one. But was there anything else that caught your eye? Let us know in the comments below. Now, inevitably, games are always added to the eShop after I've made this video. It happens every week. So if there are any major ones, please do feel free to put them in the comments below. Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town and Void Terrarium, which are releasing in America this week, aren't in this video because they released everywhere else last week, so they were in last week's video. Now, as of the time of this recording, right this second, I'm about two hours away from getting a dentist appointment finally to try and sort out the issue I have at the minute. So again, apologies for any slurring or lisping that you can hear. Hopefully it'll be sorted very soon. A quick thank you to our patrons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.